All right, here we go. So I'm going to bring a bunch of my friends on from backstage. Everybody turn on their cameras. Thanks, all. I'm going to turn off the chat for a minute. I'll bring it back in a minute, but I want everybody to get uh, to be visible here for a second. Um, and we can uh, say hello, and we're going to do a little uh, group photo. Here comes Juan, and here comes Philippe, and Mimi, and uh, Gregorio. Full house today. Excellent. And, um, okay, you guys are all muted still, so hang on. Um, I want to bring it bring you on or maybe you're not muted somebody just said something okay uh jonathan and jean paul if you want to join us on camera please do but you got to turn on your camera so let's get started here and we have um let's see gregorio mimi and juan and philippe all right excellent so guys um so this is the quick version can you just tell me who what what your question is not 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 even who you are yet like just the what's your question and that way we can organize them because if you all have the same question we'll start there right and if, otherwise i'm going to take some notes and we'll try to do them in some kind of coherent order okay so um let's see uh and actually wouldn't you would you mind guys would you smile for a second i wouldn't take some take some uh look at the camera like gregorio look over here there we go there we go thank you we got to do this or else it doesn't it doesn't exist right unless you take pictures and post it on the internet. Thank so thank you for that. Okay. So let's go with, um, let's see, who uh, who wants to go first? Philippe, why don't you, what, what's your, what's up on your mind today there, sir? Can you hear me, guys? Yeah. Sure can. Yeah. Sure, yeah. <clears throat> we, um, we're doing uh, an EMVP uh, after a proof of concept. And we have a lot of interest from um, business angel investors. Um, so my question is, the stage we are now, we're looking at formalizing those kind of uh, partnership with uh, those potential investors. So how do you go about that? Going from interest to a deal? Yeah. Okay, perfect. That's, per that's exactly what I need to know. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you Philippe. And uh, have, how about Juan? Can you unmute Juan and just tell me what's up, uh, what's on your mind? Yep. Um, I'm, can you hear yes. me? I'm no, sounds it. great. Okay, great. Um, building an MVP, mm -hmm. much like Philippe. Um, we're, we're at the software development stage, but it, it's a new GRC product, Governance, Risk, and Compliance, mm -hmm. for a large segment of the government. And um, just wanted to get thoughts, opinions, where the funding market is at. Obviously, we're in a tough economic market overall. Mm -hmm. um, and we're still early stage. Want to get some thoughts on, you know, when is it time to go tap for uh, for funding versus keep just self funding? Yes. Okay. Fair. That's a great one. Well, maybe we'll start with that because that's a nice overview. All right, uh, Mimi. How about you? Um, my question is, what are the hot spaces that investors, you know, because they do tend to be lemming like. <laughs> um, I understand that AI is the current fave. Uh, we're in the meta uh, verse space, so I'm wondering if that still has any interest. Okay, that's interesting too. Great. Okay, thank you. And Gregorio, how about you? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, sure can. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, I'm I'm building of a project which is uh, 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 that that uh, deals with uh, uh, recycling, waste recycling, and pays off crypto. Okay. Okay. And what's your, know, what would your question be about? A question: If uh, if I'm looking for some people to to co-found it, ah, okay. How can I find people here that could help uh, to set up this uh, project that I want to build? This Got public? it. Okay. That's all. Yeah, excellent. Okay, those are all great questions, guys. Thanks for stepping up. Thank you. Uh, and for the rest of you, I put up the link. Uh, some of you left the backstage. Thank you. That cleared out space for other folks who might want to join us. Oh, yeah, here's a couple gentlemen here. Let's add um, Jean Paul and Art. There we go. Busy day today. Excellent. Okay. So, how are you guys? Uh, Art, what would you? What were you going to ask about? I'm going to let the, some of the rest of you go here. Make some space there. There we go. Uh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, sure can. Good. Nice good. to meet you, Art. Uh, nice to meet you as well. So currently I'm building an MVP, uh, which is basically uh, it's a job board for salespeople to uh, for actual companies to find uh, top sales talent in their niches uh, based on actual metrics such as conversion rate and uh, sales quantity. Okay. But it's also a CRM, uh, which uh, measures those metrics and allows uh, companies to make 
to make uh, quantitative decisions on like which salespeople to hire, which industry. Okay. Uh, yeah. So in terms of a question that I have, uh, this is really a last minute thing for me. I didn't really uh, decide on a specific questions. I guess I'm here just to network and meet some people, maybe, you know, just uh, meet people in the industry, I guess, pretty much. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Nice to have you here. No worries. Yeah. If you come up with a question, um, you're welcome to turn the camera back on. <laughs> okay. Sounds good. Okay. And let's talk to uh, Jean-Paul. Yeah, uh, my name is Jean-Paul. Um, I am uh, uh, have a, um, well, sort of like a test startup. It's called worldstories.com, worldstories.com. Okay. Uh, stories of the world, so to speak. And it's uh, aimed to be a new news channel or a writing channel. Hmm. Uh, with the idea everybody should be a journalist and we shouldn't follow all the mass media mm, okay. now uh it's in a very early stage uh but i was just wondering um yeah how does it work with angel investors where to find them um how to approach them yeah stuff like that so that's why i joined sure all right well nice to meet you where are you calling from uh currently i'm in amsterdam i really live in barcelona and uh, two days before i was in new york so, <laughs> okay. uh, so you're not sure where you are sorry <laughs> you're not sure where you are today then probably no that's <laughs> true <laughs> i understand that happens okay all right well nice to meet you okay guys Thank so you. let's uh i'm going to turn your cameras off bring the chat back in and uh let's give me a second to gather my thoughts and we will uh let's see yeah, thank you, Juan. Okay, so let's bring the chat back in and turn that guy on. There we go. So that will fill up again, and then you can reach each other. So um, if you um, want to talk to each other in the chat room, please do. That's, like I said, this is a good uh, opportunity to network, like some of you mentioned there. Um, and let's see. Uh, okay, so hello to Irvine, California, Fort Collins, Colorado, San Diego, Arcadia, Texas. Um, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Da -da -da. I have a question. Okay, great. Okay, so you can put your questions in the chat as well. Um, and sorry, every time I turn off the chat, it goes away and starts over. So if you had something you wanted other people to see, I'm sorry, put it back in and then it will appear there. And those of you who are backstage, like uh, Philippe and Gregorio, if you want to um, post your uh, LinkedIn's, which is a good idea, um, you're doing it where you're doing it is in the backstage chat. You need to go over to YouTube or LinkedIn Live and put it there so that everybody else who's watching on YouTube and so forth can see it. Um, so uh, there's like two chats, right? There's those of you who are on camera and then there's a public one. So if you put it out in the uh, public chat, that will be a better place to do it. Okay, so let's see, let me look at what, what I just wrote down there. So Philippe, Juan, uh, Mimi, yep, okay. So we've got some nice trend questions. So let's start with, with that kind of thing, like Juan, let's talk about funding overview and I'll bring you back on in a second and then, then maybe me, uh, Mimi and Philippe will get more specific. Um, two uh, two other things I wanted to mention. So we have um, later in the hour week. If anybody wants to practice their pitch, you can come on camera and give us a, a minute or two, like a short pitch, no slides, just talk, and when people can give you feedback, and that's often a lot of fun and useful. This is a friendly group, and we'll uh, give you feedback that might be useful in pitching investors. Um, and then um, that's an opportunity. And then I also had a question for those of you uh, just in general. Usually when I do this, we, we had bunches, uh, dozens, 50 some, uh, yeah, a bunch of people registered on Eventbrite. So thank you for doing that. Um, I didn't get any, like zero questions in advance. And part of that sign up process is supposed to generate questions. So I have some idea what people want to talk about. And I got zero, which suggests not that you weren't interested because you're all here but that something is broken. So I'm wondering if anyone had that, if you thought you submitted a form with a question on it and it didn't work or like if the link was broken or anything like that, if you could just put in the chat room, um, just because I'm not sure what to look at in order to fix that for next time. Hopefully that made sense. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Juan. Hey Juan, you want to turn on your camera? And uh, let's talk about that uh, question. You, um, there he is. All right, Juan. So where are you, where are you, Juan? Geographically, I mean. Uh, right next to South Coast Plaza, down the street from you, I guess. Oh, okay. <laughs> Costa Mesa. All right, that's an easy one. All right, cool. Well, we could we could yeah. do this over lunch. <laughs> All right, I guess we are doing it over lunch, actually. Kind of right. Yeah. Okay. So, um, 
All right. So yeah, could you review your question for the audience and and uh, let me gather my thoughts and we'll we'll talk about it. Sure. Sure. Um, the, just the baseline of the question was debating. I have been. We're in the build of an MVP product. Uh, the space is SaaS software governance, risk, and compliance. Very exciting topic that I know everybody gets juiced up about. Um, but the the reality is, you know, we have limitations, of course, on uh, friends and family funding. Um, most of the funding has been myself. So I'm just questioning the current status of the market in going for early stage funding right now. This isn't my first rodeo. I've, I've raised money before, built multiple products, uh, software products. So I'm just trends, where things are at, um, how far your MVP maybe kind of needs to look at this mm -hmm. point. Uh, I've been told by a couple others that, you know, your MVP needs to be a little bit more mature these days. Yeah. Funding's a little bit more difficult. Um, I just, I really don't know. I haven't tapped the market at all in years. Yeah. So okay. I'm just trying to get a sense of that. Yeah. Primary. All right. Yeah. Those are, those are all good questions. Um, especially given that it sounds like you've done this before, you you know, to <laughs> do your research first. That's the number one trick, right? Uh, a lot of people, right. uh, go out and try to raise they spend years building something and then they try to like unveil it and think investors are just going to show up with a checkbook and that's really not the way it works right so um there's several questions in there and by the way everybody who's listening if you have advice for one or for each other go ahead and put it in the chat room as well this is trying to be interactive um oh and if you like this hour is based around me answering questions because once a month i also run workshops where everybody comes on camera and everybody talks um, so that's called the masterminds workshops and you can get on the email list over here and we do those as well. But this came out of that. Cause whenever I held those with 30 or 50 people, people kept asking me questions. So I thought, well, I'll just do this also. Right. So this is more about me trying to answer your questions, but I know you guys have lots of expertise and lots of things I don't know about. So connect with each other. And also you're welcome to join our masterminds workshops and especially, uh, for you Juan, if you're here in Orange County. Okay. So, okay. So, um, multiple things there. So first of all, MVP. Yes. These days, uh, the days of raising money with an idea are gone full stop. That's just not going to happen. Uh, MVP for those of you who don't know, uh, most, uh, minimum viable product. Uh, a friend of mine, Barry James calls it uh, minimum, uh, valuable product, which I think is a nice spin on that because it means that you've actually created something that offers value to the customer, not just something that kind of works because you think it's cool. Um, and that idea of having customer interaction is is critical, as any founder, experienced founder knows. Um, and these days, even an MVP is not enough, honestly. In most cases, the funding market is really looking for traction, which is code words, VC code word for money, right? Um, investors really want to see that you're out in the market, you're receiving feedback from actual customers who are actually paying you money. And it doesn't have to be a zillion dollars, but obviously the more income you have, the better your valuation is going to be, right? So um, I would, I don't know where you're at, Juan, right? But anybody that's listening to this, if your time is right now, like I'm just making this up, like 90% on product development and 10% on outreach because you're not ready to do outreach, you mm -hmm. got to flip that. It's got to be like 50-50 or even 60-40 the other way because investors mm -hmm. these days are insisting on some kind of market validation. So maybe that's interesting. MVP, market validated product. Maybe I should, uh, <laughs> maybe yeah. that's a new buzzword, right? right? I'm, I'm literally going to write that down. I'm working on a new book. So I'm always <laughs> looking for ideas. I'm going to write that down. Uh, market validated product. Um, and that's been a real shift, you know, because in the old days you could, um, the internet was new enough that just ideas were enough and people would be amazed. Um, I, I raised money based on that <laughs> back in the nineties. Um, and these days it's really more about actual businesses. So that's one point I would, uh, encourage you to talk are you in the market do you have any revenue where like where are you Juan? no no i mean i, yeah, I you, mean we have a beta right. test or alpha tester if you will but no no we're pre-money we're absolutely pre-money okay yeah. okay so i would put some effort into that most investors these days especially like here in orange county uh tech coast angels where i'm part of tech coast angels i run stanford angels for orange county um we see a lot of business plans and it's so easy to start a business these days that um, the ones that have no revenue are in a different pile than the ones that have any revenue, right? So if you can even get to any revenue, um, that's a, it, you're, it's just a qualitative difference and quantitative difference, right? It just it's literally a different, you know, path. Um, 
So sure. I would spend some time to run some pilot proof of concepts or something, just get some revenue in the door, show that some customers think this is a good idea. And I fully understand that if it's a big like ERP, you know, CRM, you know, compliance, I mean, it's probably hard to build out. And this is especially true for those of you who are in life sciences. If you're building like medical devices and stuff, you can't do anything until you spent like five years and in, in $5 million, right? How do you get revenue, right? But that's just kind of how the market is. It's tougher. So you need to focus on that, I think. Um, the other point in terms of just general timing, and this, this might be more Mimi's question, I guess, but I'll, I'll just keep going since I'm here. Um, this is a very bad time to raise money. Um, VCs, angels, are, everybody's scared is a strong word, but wary is, is a minimum. We're certainly all wary. Um, personal angel investors have, we've seen our portfolios plummet with the tech stock crash and the crypto crash last year. Um, VCs are all worried because They've raised a ton of money. You keep hearing about dry powder and there's billions and billions right. of dollars like waiting to be invested. But what isn't clear is how much of that is going to be dedicated to follow on rounds and workouts and buyouts of the companies already in their portfolio that are way underwater. Right. So say there's 300 billion in dry powder, which is a number I've seen. Is that all really available? Not really. Right. Um, but nobody really knows. <laughs> Uh, and then, of course, we have interest rates. So now interest rates aren't zero anymore. There's an alternative. Like I can buy bonds and, you know, get 5% government backed stuff. And I don't need to maybe take all this risk that might take five or 10 years and maybe go to zero by investing in, in founders. So that's the negative. Uh, I'm an optimistic guy, as I said at the beginning of the show. So here's the positive. The positive is that all of us in the investing space are, are, still here, right? We do this. Like I do this because I love it. I'm literally wearing the t-shirt, you know, <laughs> this is what I do. And we're waiting for the market to come back and we're excited about the opportunities in this sort of, sort of down market. Uh, and that means that um, it's a great time to build relationships and the relationships are what lead to the funding. So all of you, mm -hmm. I think the advice is get out, come to stuff like this, network, go to things in the real world. Now that the pandemic is over, like go meet people, shake hands. Um, and the relationships are what lead to money. Nobody writes a check on the first date, right? Um, and that's really what this is. It's like dating. So um, it's a really good time to do that because uh, everybody's wary to write a check, but everybody still has to have lunch, right? <laughs> and they still drink coffee, you yeah. know? And, and we still got to fill our calendars with meetings <laughs> and look busy, right? Yeah. So, you know, be friendly, ask for advice, and, and maybe the money will show up. That was a long answer. I hope, was it? What is any of that? Oh, useful? That, was, that was great. That that got to the heart of it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right. Well, good. I'm, I'm glad that. Um, and I, it's a good question. So thank you. That that set the stage for the rest of the, uh, the our, our hour here together too, because I know a lot of people are are wondering about this, um, all those issues, right? So um, okay. Well, I hope to meet you in person. Uh, you're right nearby, and um, we have a bunch of events. So you can get on the Orange County Startup Council list. Maybe that's how you heard about this anyway, but. Yeah, I follow you. I follow okay. the council. Great. Okay, great. Well, nice to meet you, Juan. And we're going to move on here. And um, let's see. So it looks like Mimi's policing in the... Thank you, Mimi. Right. The backstage only allows 10 people at a time. That's just the constraint of you know a video service. Um, and uh, you're welcome to participate in the public chat room uh, by typing in on uh, YouTube or Facebook or LinkedIn Live. Uh, it looks like all of those are working today, which is wonderful. And I even got the microphone working. So um, we're all, all doing a thing here. Uh, Freight Trans Manager, can I join? You have joined. You are joined. Um, and Craftus, yes, it's, it's impossible to join because there's 10 people already back there. So um, those folks got here ahead of you. Next time, come in early or or email me the questions beforehand. Um, did anybody, by the way, answer my question about um, having trouble um, submitting questions? Um, let me see here. Um, did anybody difficulty join? Sorry, I'm just scrolling through the. Um, da, 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 okay, I don't see anybody having any of that issue. Okay, oh, maybe it is working. Just. I don't know, but with all these people here, it's hard to believe that that form wasn't working. Anyway, um, okay, so let's see. We were going to, so Mimi, where's Mimi? Mimi was next, I think. Um, sorry, this, these scroll bars are tiny. There's Mimi. Okay, hi, Mimi. Ta-da, there she is. Hey, Mimi. <laughs> okay. Hi. So did we already kind of cover your thing or what you wanted to talk about? Um, A little bit. 
I, I actually wanted to ask, do you see any um, parallels between all the companies that are getting deals, like in terms of their level of advancement? You said the MVP has to be fully fleshed out. Do you need to show traction and stuff like that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of do these days. Yeah. I mean, that's the answer. I, I mean, you know, there's a million investors in the world and everybody has different you know, appetites and preferences, and they're at a different stage in the life cycle of their fund and their checkbooks are different, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the standard I think is that, um, traction is what everybody's looking for. Cause why wouldn't we, right? I mean, as investors, our job is to de-risk and take as little risk as possible for the maximum return, right? Whether this is personal money as an angel or whether it's as a fiduciary who runs a venture capital firm where you're investing some other folks money. Right. And if there's, you know, a, a thousand business plans and uh, 700 of them have no revenue and no proof of anything, you're going to look at the other 300. And of those 300, there's 10 of them that are actually making money. That's the 10 you're going to talk to. I mean, that's just, that's just how it is. I mean, um, unfortunately, right. Um, so software has been a real gift in the sense that it's made it easier for so many of us to start businesses or to do crazy stuff like this, which wasn't possible 20 years ago. Right. But it also means that there's an immense amount of competition for early stage founders uh, like yourself, I guess. So yeah, um, you said you're working on a metaverse thing. Yeah. Uh, we're going to license our metaverse to companies who don't have technical abilities to do metaverse. Oh. We do have some initial partnerships in place, so that would be our traction, but you know, to build up the traction, we need some seed funding. Right. Yeah. That's the chicken and egg thing at the early stage. Yeah. There's not a good answer to that, you know, and I, I, I'll just tell you that because you go to so many startup things and, and VCs just never want to say no, but the truth is no. I mean, <laughs> okay. Seriously. I mean, I wouldn't, I would not be spending like, you know, if you're, yeah, if, if my kids wanted to do that right now, no. Right. I mean, go get a job. Um, find something that will make some money, um, you know, and or or spend all your time not on the product, but on finding people who believe in the mission, mm -hmm. because this is what this is what getting invested in these days is about. It's either. I, I, yeah, you're right. Thank you. This is a good point. Um, there's two paths, right? There's one is, hey, we've got whatever, you know, three million of monthly recurring revenue and we're growing like this. OK, well, that's not going to be too tough, right? <laughs> that's a financial transaction. There's lots of people that will be happy to talk to you about that. But the other path is we have an idea, a cause, a product, something that's going to make a difference in some important way. And ideally, this is almost cause related, right? Like it's a medical device that cures cancer or, you know, somehow helps, uh, you know, all the terrible statistics you see about teen girls with depression and social media or obesity or, you know, something like real. Um, and you find people that care about that, right? Um, the, the next door neighbor to that in parallel is to find people that have made money in your industry before, and that's going to be mm -hmm. tough for the metaverse, but, <laughs> yeah. um, but if you can find people that get the space, they're going to trust you. They're going to give you the benefit of the doubt a lot faster than some random person you meet at a conference. Right. Um, so that's what I would be doing. If you, you need cash in a kind of an unproven area is to find people that have done that, something like that before. Mm -hmm. Um, and try to make friends with them because they will, you know, the problem with investing is that you have to have a relationship before it happens these days and to build a relationship takes years, right? So yeah. the shortcut to that is finding people who you already vibe with. And to do that, I would be looking deeply at, um, investors who have a portfolio where hopefully they've already made this kind of money or even better, they have grad, they have, uh, graduated, exited in this space. You know, like mm -hmm. Facebook people who are in the meta space or people from Second Life back in the day or, you know, people who kind of get the space already and are into it and try to make friends there. Because at least that will advance you. You know, if you think of a relationship as a whole bunch of steps, it pushes you, you know, half a dozen steps deeper immediately uh, and gives you credibility that you wouldn't have just in a cold intro. Um, and, and I can't help but mention that's why that's one of the reasons that uh, that we built this, the Startup Investors Directory dot com because it's got this filter. And what I'm trying to do is make the um, venture capital world more transparent so that you can go and search, like like find find a company that went public in your space. And this is true for everybody, not just Mimi. Find a company that went public in your space, research that company, then come here and find out who invested in that company, right? Or you don't have to come here, but I mean, go to um, the Edgar filings, the SEC filings, figure out who the people were that made money, 
and they've got money and they made money doing what you want to do, that's a great person to try to make friends with as opposed to just me who happens to be some guy you met on the internet, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, I don't know if that's helpful, but... Um, no, thank you so much. Realistic anyway, hopefully. <laughs> All right. Well, nice to meet you. Thanks for coming on. All right. So let's... Um, who else we got here? Uh, let me check the backstage chat um, and see. Okay. So, da, 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 da. okay. Oh, all right. Okay. So, Philippe, you were up next, I think. Are you still backstage? Um, Jean Paul, Juan, Philippe, sorry, scrolling here. Anthony. And Anthony Glenn? Anthony, is that you? Okay. Okay. Cool. All right. Oh, we'll bring you on in a minute. Uh, hold on. Um, just scrolling through these. Uh, okay. And UA. Okay. UA is here too. Cool. Hi, UA. Um, all right. Uh, looks like, oh, there's Philippe. Okay. Philippe, did you want to come on? Sure. Yeah. Okay. There you are. All right. All right. Bonjour. All Merci right. <laughs> so, uh, what do we got? You wanted to remind it. Can you remind me and everybody what we're going to talk about? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, I mean, in a, to make it short, we <clears throat> we run the concept. The proof of concept was successful with uh, live testers as well, 46 users online. So we optimize everything. So now we, we, we're we selecting tech venture people to build the MVP here in Washington, D.C. Um, because we, we're building a, a news and media platform for journalists and editors to get together. Um, so Washington, D.C. is one of the best place to be uh, for the market for this. And there is a lot of interest. Uh, a lot of people come and fetch us and want to invest uh, because they can see the traction. As you were talking about the traction before, we, the MVP is not built yet, but we started to build traction with uh, professional university editors, you know, um, to show the interests of the people uh, on this platform. So yeah. by doing so, um, Investors knock on doors, like, hey, I like what you do. Um, I like to give you, you know, 50,000, 100,000, 200,000. So, what do we do from there? I mean, I'm like, okay. <laughs> what right. Do I <laughs> right. All right. Well, first of all, everybody in the chat room, give Philippe a hand. <laughs> People are trying to give him money. This is a good problem, <laughs> especially in this market. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, so this is the good news is that that is solvable, right? And so this is not legal advice. This is just my impression of what might be helpful. Uh, and there are certainly other people uh, in the chat room who probably know better about this than I do. Uh, at least I saw at least one attorney in there, Ray uh, and Yui. Uh, there's two, at least two attorneys in there who could probably give you more uh, specific and qualified advice. But here's here's where I would start. Um, the, um, the standard these days for raising money at the angel round stage is probably uh, the safe note, which is a uh, uh, simple agreement for future equity, safe. And it's a form uh, provided by Y Combinator, which is a leading accelerator. Um, are you aware of the safe note? Do you know anything about that? No, no, no. Okay, perfect. Okay, so this is good for everybody then. So safe, the safe note, uh, and you can Google this, it's very common. Um, like I said, simple agreement for future equity. So there's basically... I mean, we could go all day about this, but there's basically three kinds of investments um, that investors will put into an early stage, high growth startup company. So I'm not really talking about like restaurants or nail salons or, you know, a, a oil chain shop, you know, like real world businesses. This is more like software and high growth businesses like Philips. Um, so three kinds, three tracks, basically. The traditional is equity, which means that you sell stock in the company. Um, this is hard to do at the earliest stages because it's very expensive. It takes lots of documentation. Um, my first company, our first round, we raised $100,000 uh, and spent 15000 of it on lawyers. Eh. <laughs> right? Not a great use of money. And this is one of the reasons these things have evolved since the 90s, right? Um, the second route is a convertible note. A convertible note is a, a loan, basically, where um, the investor loans you money uh, but then that money, amount of money, you know, say $100,000 will convert into equity later once people have a better idea of what the company is worth. Because the other problem with selling equity at the beginning is you don't have much revenue. And it's hard to know, is this company worth a million dollars or $10 million? You know, nobody really knows. And that's where the safe comes in. The safe came in um, about 10 years ago, I guess, 
because Y Combinator is a big accelerator and they pump out these days hundreds of companies a year. And they needed a way to avoid all that negotiation and legal legal fees and so forth. And the safe is the idea that it's literally, as the name says, simple agreement for future equity. We sign a deal. I said, I'm going to give you 50 grand, Philippe, uh, and we will agree that at some point in the future, that's going to convert into equity once somebody invests real money, basically. That's kind of the concept. So like, so let's say, you know, I give you 50 grand, we get going, and then uh, a big VC, you, you've got some growth of venture capital firm comes and said, we're going to give you a million dollars. We want to do a priced equity round. We're going to value the company at $5 million. At that point, the 50 grand I gave you would convert at that price then. Right. So it's you're just kind of kicking the can down the road. The safe is what it's called. So everybody uses that a lot, except now I know all of those of you who are experienced investors are going, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're out of date. I know. I know. Hang on. I'm not done. The, the safe note has been revised heavily since the original version. So there's at least two kinds of safes. The original safe was what they call a pre money safe. And that has been outmoded. So if you go in Google safe, do not use the uh, 2013 version. There's a newer version, I think from 2018, called the post money safe. And that is what um, investors will insist on if they have any idea what they're doing. Because it, it we don't need to get into all the details, but it affects the dilution. Uh, basically, with the original safe, if I put in my 50 grand, you could raise a, a million more dollars using that safe, and my money would just get diluted away, my share, right? Even though I was the first person who took the most risk. So the post money safe, um, kind of fixes that. that. That's all we need to talk about there. And I'm sure there's people in the chat room who can explain that. Yes. And Mimi's saying, I've heard bad things about the safe. That's why. Exactly right, Mimi. There are, um, uh, and and Yui, yeah, okay. So Yui's in there, right. Yui is actually a startup attorney, so you can connect with her. Uh, nice to see you, Yui. Um, but anyway, the post money safe is a better vehicle. And uh, at Tech Coast Angels, which is the, the largest angel investment group in, in America that I'm a part of, um, we had a meeting just last week where one of our members uh, from our Los Angeles chapter came down and, and talked about these exact issues, actually. And the post money safe is much more investor friendly with and more fair. Basically, it's more balanced. The original safe was just a little loose and, and that's why it's gotten a really bad reputation. But um, the post money safe is what I would be looking at if I were you, Philippe. So that was a long answer, perhaps, but maybe that gives you some context. Investors may want more than that. Um, and that depends a lot on how sophisticated they are. If these are like it's your your brother or your your aunt or somebody, they're going to trust you and you can keep it pretty simple. But anyone who has done this very often is going to want more paperwork probably. And even the safe often gets uh, modified or people add like a side letter to it and uh, more details in terms of like uh, board, board seats and voting. And it, it can get very complex, of course. Um, but anyway, that's where I would start. Is that on the right track? Yeah, that's uh, that's helpful. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, well there you go. So if anybody else, uh, Yui and anybody else in the uh, chat room, uh, please connect with Philippe. Um, and there are lots of resources about this. So of course you can Google and search all over the place. Uh, you can also come to the other events we have if you guys aren't. Um, oh, I have it up on the screen already. Cool. <laughs> Sign up for that that email list, and and we'll try to. This is what we talk about a lot because I'm a a serial founder as well as now a serial investor and. These details are what can make all the difference, right? In terms of your relationship with the investors and also your um, your reward for hopefully building a great company. And if you do it wrong, it can just be a drag, as well as, of course, lose everybody's money. <laughs> so uh, this is this is this is a knowable thing. Like how to find the right investor? That's hard to know, but this is knowable. Um, just like the stock options thing, I was saying that Cake Equity provides. Like there are certain things that are, ha have been decided and standardized and this is one of them so you can you can solve that and even without a legal background philippe or anyone else you could download this pdf of the safe the post you get the post money safe and look like you know what you're doing in about half an hour <laughs> as opposed to having to go to law school so all right well nice okay. to meet you thank you thank you for joining us we're going to move on and see who's um shan says equity safe note what is the third uh in between shan that's a good question uh, all right. Well, Kieran already answered you. Thank you, Kieran. There you go. Um, yeah, there's a convertible note. That's kind of in between equity and a safe. Um, and those are, uh, that's, a, that's the right answer. Okay. So how are we doing here? Oh, wow. We're cruising time-wise here. 
Um, let's see. Let me check backstage here. Um, well, let me run through the chat. I haven't been keeping up with the chat. Has anybody said anything uh, controversial? Hey, you know, by the way, one of the goals of these is that you guys all meet each other. So put in your, um, your LinkedIn's. I'm going to put mine in again uh, if I can find it. Uh, just say hi, you know. Um, we need to do all this together. There it is. Uh, we need to do this together. Um, there are people who get shit done, and there's everybody else. <laughs> and if you're here, hopefully you're one of the get shit done people, um, and uh, I'd be happy to connect with you. Uh, some of you were asking, how do you connect with me? I ScottFox.com or LinkedIn. Uh, I'll be honest, LinkedIn, um, I'm happy to connect, and I would like to connect. If you message me there, though, my inbox get overwhelmed, so try to find me um through scottfox.com or the Startup Council, get on our newsletter lists and you can reply to those and those kind of emails will reach me. Um, and um, what I can do mostly, like I can't review everybody's pitch decks and I can't like do one, uh, well, I will do one-on-one -on -one consulting, but it's expensive. Um, but you can, um, uh, the thing that's easiest for us to help with is if you need referrals. So like if you need an attorney, for example, we have attorney sponsors and I'm happy to introduce you to some great attorneys or accountants or um, different kinds of resources, like a specific question, like who can help me with this? We can do that because we have databases of that kind of stuff, right? So if that's useful to you, email us. And then um, just quickly, if you're watching the replay, um, like I just said there, um, you're all welcome to ask follow-up questions on YouTube um, on the comments there, and we'll try to hit you there as well. Um, and that would be helpful for us too. If you like and share, um, that will get more traffic and we can build up some knowledge together uh, to help each other um, learn how to navigate these uh, complex, complex worlds of um, startup financing. Okay, so let's go, um, let's see, let's put that back on. And then let me just run through the chat here. Um, I gotta catch up a little here. Okay, so, um, da, 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 da. Okay, the paradigm switch asks, I'm working on a clickable demonstrator and will gather 40 or so intent letters. When would you or another investor look at the project? Allow a pitch. Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, it's not, there's no, you know, specific answer. Letters of intent are great. Um, I'll be honest though, rather than 40 letters of intent, I think you've proven your point after five or six. How about getting three or four of them to pay you? That, that would be much more impressive. Um, 40 is like too much right? You, you need to refocus on the actual business, not intent, but actually doing it. Um, and then, you know, how, how do you get somebody to meet with you? Um, I think a lot of it's about researching and finding people that are already interested in that, right? Um, I get flooded with requests like this, so I, I'm probably not your guy, um, but I'm happy to pass you on to the different funds that I'm involved with. There's a page on scottfox.com. Um, it's scottfox.com slash startup dash funding, I think is the page, or you can find it if you want, that lists a bunch of the places that, um, that I work with. And, um, this, this is the funny thing, angel groups. Uh, I'm mostly an angel investor, not a venture capitalist, right? But this is also true for venture capital, uh, investors. We're looking for good deals, right? We do want to see them. The problem is we get so many that we have to kind of filter them and we can't even respond to everybody because when, especially if you do like this and I come on, you know, in public, and I go, bam, I'm going to get like a hundred of these tomorrow. Right. So don't take it personally. If people don't get back to you in detail, you know, this is your baby, it's your job, but it's our job to be kind of filtering all that. Right. So, um, the way to get them to react is to find something personal that you can relate on. Right. So if you have 40 letters of intent, well, who are those 40 people? Who do they know? You've already built a very interesting network of customers. Well, maybe some of them could be investors or who do they know, right? And, and work through LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a wonderful tool. Um, and find friends, right? This is really about friend raising before fundraising. So build a bunch of relationships and gradually ask for advice. And hopefully you can in, uh, entice people into interaction. It's, um, I was going to say it's that easy, which is not, but but that is the, the reality, Okay. All right, so um, let's try uh, cruising through the chat here. Um, uh, Ashkan, I, hey, um, if you're, um, you can come backstage if you can. Um, what is the link for now? I have difficulty going. Yes. Okay. Yes. Can I join? Yes, you did. Uh, uh, Tom McCadden's. Okay, there's some insperity folks in the chat room. Okay. Michael. Hey, Michael. 
I'd think about how I discovered the need for, could you start sending out cold email? Okay, this is a suggestion, Michael. Thank you for making that. Um, B Diamonds is looking for some credit help. Uh, Sean Ray, okay, that's a couple um, pitches. Okay, so some of you in the backstage area, if you don't have a question, can you, I hate to say this, but can you turn, can you leave <laughs> so that new people can come in? So, um, and go over on YouTube or LinkedIn, and that will allow um, some folks to come in uh, so that we have backstage pitchers who can uh, practice their pitch for us, okay? So um, I hate to do that, but that's the limits of this platform, right? Okay, um, Kieran, lucky enough to meet you. Yeah, that's right, I thought your name sounded familiar, Kieran. Um, nice to meet you. Oh, right, you do the, the pitch stuff, right? Nice to see you. Okay, um, yes, yes, Terry Bell says we're signing. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, so Terry says, we're signing contracts that commit to share during launch. So they're signing founding ambassadors with thousands of followers while they build their minimum lovable product. Cute. Um, have you heard of others doing that? No, I have not, uh, Terry. That is interesting. Um, so they're signing up friends and followers to uh, actually help them launch. I think that's very clever. Why not? Um curious about what you are giving them like why are they committing to do that that's that is interesting though but um iyuga.net that's a clever clever thing um, but why not right um and this is this is a good example actually terry everybody terry's demonstrating some kind of traction even if it's not money right so if he can have a whole bunch of people that are going to ready to hit the share button at the same time you know they could get trending and maybe that's that's a boost that's cool and that's the kind of thing that even if you don't have money traction, if you can run some experiments, either that's a clever way to do it, or you know, spend a hundred dollars or a thousand dollars, some you know, controllable amount on pay-per-click ads, and target a bunch of people, uh, and say, you know, we're trying to launch this kind of product, so we put in those keywords on Google search or on LinkedIn or whatever network, Instagram, um, and we hit whatever, you know, we spent a thousand dollars and we reached three hundred people and 40% of them click through and 20% of those bought it. That's interesting, right? Investors eat numbers. Like we, we, we want to see the path of this. Like we love your passion, but we, we need to know that the numbers work. So if you have a way to demonstrate in a controlled way within your budget, some kind of traction like that, even that can be helpful as opposed to just, um, you know, we have this great idea. And if you give me money, we're sure it's going to work, right? That's, that's not really how it works anymore. All right. Um, Krafta says, when do you expect the market to get better and all the dry powder getting back to the startups, if ever? Uh, Krafta, so that's a good question. Um, I don't think there's an answer, right? Um, this is one of those places, I've had a lot of discussions about this lately. There's so much dry powder. Dry powder, the, the metaphor here, for those of you who don't know, is gunpowder, right? You have a bunch of gunpowder and wet powder won't spark and won't fire the gun or the cannon, right? So dry powder is the idea you have a lot of ammunition and there's hundreds of billions of dollars of dry powder right now, meaning that there's all these venture capital funds that have raised money, but they're scared to invest as we talked about earlier. So the dry powder is sitting there. So people are kind of waiting like when, when are the floodgates going to open all this money, come back into the market and valuations can shoot up again and companies go public, you know, and everything's, everything's good again. Um, when is that going to happen? No idea. Um, but here's the thing, that is not the right question because that's a 50,000 foot view of the VC market as a whole. And there is no such thing really. This is statistics, right? So the sample size is thousands or hundreds of or millions of people and deals. And that doesn't matter to you. You are one company with one deal in one market at, with one product or one service, right? One team, you are one data point. So the million sample is bullshit, right? What's your situation, right? You're in the market for, you know, whatever you have a ERP, CRM, sorry, buzzwords, but you have a software platform for uh, early stage aerospace uh, logistics management. Okay, that's a thing, right? So it doesn't matter what the other 900,000 startups are doing or the 300 billion of dry powder, you need like 1 million of capital in that niche. So how is the market in that niche? Right. So anyway, I, I wouldn't don't take the headlines too seriously. Most of the, the journalists up front, unfortunately, don't know anything about this business. Right. So they take these big statistics and blow them up into into trends. And, and, and it is a trend. I mean, it's not not a trend, but it doesn't matter. 
you have one, if you're a founder, I'm a founder, right? Like I, I'm, these days I'm an investor, but I do this show because I'm a founder. I'm like you guys. Like I have this thing. I'm going to bring it to the world. I'm going to go find the people that like this and we're going to do it, right? So that's a sample of like five people, maybe 10. It's not this big statistical bullshit, right? So if you're, this is what you do, then go to that conference where all those people are. Go find that chat room on Facebook where they hang out or LinkedIn, right? Listen to that podcast, you know, whatever is in that niche. And what are those folks doing? That's what matters, right? That kind of research in your niche is what matters. Don't listen to the, the, the hype, right? Uh, because, you know, the hype on the one side, you know, last year, two years ago was crypto. Amazing. All crypto all the time. And then it was metaverse, all metaverse all the time. And now it's AI, all AI all the time. Well, there are still real businesses being built in all kinds of other real niches that may or may not be up or down, but it comes down to that first person who's going to write you a check. And that's the person you want to look at over a lunch or over a beer, or over five beers or five lunches and develop a relationship. And they see your vision and together you come up with a path forward. That's your job, guys. It's not to sit back and think, hmm, how much dry powder is there out there, right? I'm not picking on you, Craft. That's, that's a good question. But this is a thing. This is a, what is it? Like an optical illusion, right? This is one deal. You just need one deal. It's like getting married, right? You're not going to get married 10 times. Go find one potential spouse and pitch him. <laughs> pitch him and take him to dinner over and over and over, right? And and put a ring on it, right? That That's what this is about. So is the wedding market up or down? I don't care. I'm in love, right? I'm going to go make this happen with her, right? That That's your job. All right. Sorry. Got me going there. Boof. Okay. So, okay. Um, so, uh, yes. Okay. Craft, this is a follow-up question. You said it's a good time to build the connection. Yes, that's the point. Could you recommend the best approaches, tools, meetups, places, et cetera, to connect with the investors? Yeah, here it is. Craftus is feeding me this stuff. Oh, Audrey. Are you on camera, Audrey? You're backstage? Andre, sorry, Andre, not Audrey. All right, all right, Andre, come on. Let's talk about this. Here he is. Hello, everyone. All right. Um, should I do the pitch or should I just ask the question? Well, let's just talk a little bit. Like, it, it, it was what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. We could do the pitch too, but let's. It, is what I'm saying helpful? Does that make sense? Uh, yes, it is. Though um, my previous question about the market with lots of dry powder, it kind of makes finding finding this person and the best deal easier, right? So that, that was that was my question um, was about. Uh -huh. okay. uh, but um, yeah, and um, basically, uh, I have a company, I have a product, and uh, we have clients, and some clients are huge, like Fortune 500 clients, and. We developed a new version of this product and we're looking for money to kind of uh, expand on the market because our new version is so much better and um, i'm not sure if it's a good time to to look for investment because you know like you said <laughs> not too much dry powder and i'm new to this uh, you know situation and i don't know where to look for the investors where to find places what tools should i use to to meet them you know stuff like that yeah yeah so can you recommend me what to do in this situation? Yeah, yeah. So where are you based geographically? Uh, I'm in Virginia. Virginia, okay. East so Coast, DC. yep. Yeah, DC, okay, good. That's a good DC. market. Okay, so there's definitely some money there. Um, okay, so, well, first of all, you're here. So that's the right step, right? Th one of the reasons I do this and I write my books and so forth is to help provide on-ramps for people like you, it's, especially if you have a product and you have real customers. This is this is congratulations. That's a, that's a, that's a real thing um, for sure. Um, so then you start coming to events and one of the few good things that came out of the pandemic is that we can do this kind of thing virtually and it isn't kind of quite as weird as it was five years ago um so yes coming to this put your um your you are your linkedin in the chat room you know make some friends uh don't be shy follow people on linkedin comment you know find your people Th this is the trick um and it comes down you already know the answers you um you you find some some events online, you find some meetups, you go in person, you go to some conferences, you you know that, right? That That is the answer. There's nothing more to this than going out and doing that again and again and again. The difference I think that is enabled these days that maybe you're missing, maybe not, but um, is what I was talking about is the researching the people beforehand, right? Don't go to the general conference about venture capital investing because it turns out that it's all private equity people who only do series C deals or something, right? That's just, that wasn't the right room. You've got to find the right room. So people, when they start raising money, they either think it's really easy and they just like go to a bank or a VC and expect them to write a check. And that's naive. 
or they go to, they kind of hit a whole bunch of people without really doing the research. And they spend like 90% of their time at conferences, like meeting everybody and pitching everybody. And it, that's not the way to do it. You, you got to figure out your thesis. Who's your ideal investor? And then work backwards. What is the, what's your ideal investor? What stage? How much money do you want? What kind of deal structure do you have? And then, like I said earlier, go find people that have had success in that area. Go do the research on LinkedIn. Follow them. Comment on their stuff. Make friends. Um, go to the events with intention and purpose. Like know who's going to be at the event. You know, this is a, a, um, a conference in your industry, or it's a conference of investors in that industry. And and if all else fails, you can you can try this website of ours, StartupInvestorsDirectory.com. I'm not trying to make this a commercial, but that's why I built this because people miss the research step. And if you have an angle. Um, especially these days, um, you and I are two two white guys, so that doesn't help. But if you're if you're a female or you're you know uh, um, underrepresented somehow, there are extra folks even trying to help you, which I think is great, right? But all those pieces is is the way to do this. Um, and I would think about this as like a business development thing. You know, start with a list of two hundred maybe, right, and narrow it down, narrow it down, narrow it down, and you've got to really boil the ocean. Until you find, you know, these top, I don't know, 10, 20, 25, right? And figure out who they are. And it's personal. Like, go find Julie Smith, who's the venture partner at this firm. And she invested in two other deals like this, you know, at her old firm. And now she's here. And the timing is right because they just raised a new fund, which means they have money to put to work. So there's this timing element as well. Because sometimes VCs, that their fund is near the end and they don't have any money left in that fund. And they're really focused on raising more money from their partners, not investing money, right? So there's this time element that a lot of people miss. Anyway, I'm just going on and on here. Is some of that helpful? Uh, useful? Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Scott. Okay, good. Yeah, I hope so. It's it's a, it's a not easy. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay. So did you want to practice a pitch as well? Um, yeah, I can try Okay. All right. If we still have time, because it's four or four. And, yeah. Um... Let me let me just run through the chat room and see what else we've got going on here. We usually run a little over, so we'll be right back to Andre. And uh, it looks like Daniel and Philippe are backstage. If you wanted to join us and try a um, uh, a quick pitch as well, we can do a few of those. Um, and let me just run through the chat here. Uh, okay. So those are good questions from Andre. Um, Okay, what is the best way to get help for a game software project? Need funds for old debt relief. Okay, a new development. Okay, so TS is asking, you guys might be able to, I can feature this. There we go. Look at that. Isn't that slick? Okay, so a game project. Cool. Existing MVP. Good. Need funds for old debt relief. <clears throat> Nobody's going to give you money to pay off your old debts. That is just not what investors want to do. Um, sorry, TS, that is, that is kind of a non-starter, honestly. Um, I would, I mean, I don't know your situation again, right? This is not legal or financial advice that's qualified, right? You should talk to specific experts in this area, but, um, yeah, I, I don't even know where to go with that, right? If you have debt, maybe you need to start a new company, file bankruptcy and start over. I mean, then you're, nobody's going to invest if you file bankruptcy either. So um, I, my best, I don't have good advice. I'm sorry. Maybe people in the chat room can help. Um, how does he, he or she work his way out of that? Um, if you have something new and exciting, then awesome, right? Hopefully that can grow you out of the situation. Um, but that is one of the things that investors are not excited about. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, Okay, so then, okay, uh, Terry, yes, if you need to go uh, to YouTube, no, uh, you the, um, sorry, the, let me put up the other there. If you want to come backstage, there's the URL. Um, and if you want to pitch, we'll do uh, two or three of those. Okay, um, like, da -da -da -da, da -da -da. hello from Brazil, hello, Renato. And uh, Shan and Karen helped each other out. Good. Uh, any resources for tax optimization? Well, that's a good question, Freight Trans Manager. Um, I am not a tax person, and I hate my taxes as much as you do. <laughs> but the one major thing that keeps coming up uh, is this, uh, at least in the United States, because I know a lot of you are not in the United States, but there's this, um, oh, man, what's it called? There's, a, there's basically tax rebates that you can get for startup employees 
and you can save a lot of money. And there are companies that have been built around this. And the one I know the best is called Ardius, A-R-D-I-U-S, Ardius. Uh, and they got acquired by Gusto, G-U-S-T-O. Found, and Ardius is founded by my friend Joshua Lee. Shout out to Joshua if he's watching today. Um, and uh, they can get, uh, you have to have employees, as I understand. And again, I'm not an expert here. You have to have like W-2 actual employees. I don't think it works for contractors. But if you do, you can get a bunch of their money back, um, their payroll basically back from the government. So there's probably some folks in the chat room who can do better than I can on that. But I would check that. Um Email to get referral, Charlotte, uh, go to um, scottfox.com and there's a contact form there. And actually uh, go to startupcouncil.org, this uh, URL here. Um, there's a lot of different resources there, some of which could be helpful for you as well. Um, all right. Um, yeah, we got a lot of people here today. Thanks everybody for coming. I, I hope this is hope this is useful. Um, some straight talk. Um, let's see. Uh, they will get referral fees. Oh, this is Terry's answering my question. So he was going to get people to sign up for his launch by giving them referral fees. Interesting. Okay. Nice. I'm a founder in a startup in Brazil. This is Renato for surveys online, creating a chatbot like Google form or type form, but with more fun chatbots. I'm trying to find partners in the U.S. to go international. Any tips? That's interesting, Renato. Um, well, one tip is to talk about it here and to put your... Um, uh, LinkedIn in the uh, chat room. It looks like you um, may be doing that already. <laughs> so that's good. I'm a little behind on the chat. Um, so yeah, uh, this kind of thing is very helpful. It comes to our masterminds workshops. We do a lot of that. Oh, and this reminds me, there was a guy Gregorio was on earlier. He wanted to talk about co-founders. That's a very common topic because a lot of folks, um, I'm really working at the pre-seed and seed stage, right? Um, where these issues recur. So happy to, happy to help. Um, probably don't have time to get into that more today. But i um, happy to see you. Um, and Renato, it sounds interesting. Very cool. Uh, Cynthia says, best hour. Hey, Cynthia, best hour of the day. <laughs> go, us, go. <laughs> Thank you, Cynthia. Nice to see you. Uh, Kieran, what Scott is saying, build relationships before you need to raise money. Yeah, that's right. We're not just checkbooks, right? Nobody likes to be treated like a checkbook. Um, let's see. I, heard, I learned stock. Glad to be here. Scott's meeting is always very professional. Thank you. Um, great. I'm a software developer, public market. All right. Nice to see you. I don't know who that is. I learned stock. What's your, do I know you <laughs> based in San Francisco? Okay. All right. Um, let's see. Hector, Hector Solis. Wow. Okay. Nice to see you. That's a name from the past. I hope you're doing well. Uh, he used to be part of my coaching forum back when, uh, click millionaires, this one, I ran a coaching forum, uh, for, I don't know, half a dozen years, right? Hector, that book came out in 2011, I think. Um, still selling, still selling pretty well, actually, if you haven't seen this, um, this is for those of you who are, um, this isn't so much about VC and angel investing. This is for those of you who are like quitting, want to quit your job and start your own, like uh, your own startup, like figure out what you want to do and how to do it kind of on the side hustle thing and then grow it into a real business. And this is on Amazon and all over the world. I give the money, uh, the profits back to charity to uh, fund college scholarships back in inner city Detroit, where I grew up. Um, so if that's interesting to you, it's on Amazon and it's a bunch of languages. Um, there's the Japanese version and the uh, uh, Vietnamese version and so forth. But anyway, nice to see you, Hector. Very cool. Hope you're doing well. Um, um, all right. And then, uh, Hey, by the way, guys, if you're listening to this would love if you like and share and comment, right. I'm just giving away this expertise and I'm, I'm not, I'm not mad about that. I'm happy to do it, but if you can like and share online and subscribe and post questions on YouTube and all that, you know, this is all feeds into the growth of the, the platform. Uh, and that's what this startup council is, is really trying to help everybody, um, level up essentially. And I mean, everybody. Okay. Um, Gregorio, um, let's see. Okay. This guy's saying, do not spray and pray. That's right. Renato. Good. You guys are talking to Renato. Employee retention credits. Maybe Josh. I, yeah, it doesn't sound quite right. It's, it's a tax. Maybe. Anyway, some, <laughs> thank you for the, the help, Josh. I'm not sure. Renato. Hey, Ray. Super useful. Well, good. Well, I hope that was useful. Whatever it was. I must've said something clever because Ray's a smart guy. He went to Stanford law school like I did. <laughs> um, Julia, hi Scott. How do you utilize a patent with the product in the pitch deck? Julia, I don't know how to utilize a patent with the product. Well, you mean how do you include? Okay, how do you mention your patents in your pitch deck? 
Uh, I think that's what you mean. Um, chapter it's patent. So basically, a patent ends up in your in your pitch deck as a a part of your defensive moat, right? This is why we're defensible. Why the competitors won't be able to crush us, right? So defensive uh, strategies are important because investors want to know. You know, if we put in a million dollars. There's not 14 other people are going to copy you and, you know, then our money was wasted, right? So a patent is a nice thing for that. And that's great if you have one. And I would put it in as a slide um, somewhere near the competition section. Um, and also, depending on how strong and broad the patent is, um, you know, it might be really critical, right? If you, uh, especially in medical devices or something like that, having patents is quite important. Um, anything mechanical, really. Uh, so I would try to... Um, put that right up front, um, even earlier in the deck. Um, in most software cases, patents aren't quite as strong. Um, like software um, utility patents are better than, actually Ray's here, Ray's an IP lawyer, right? Ray, why don't you chime in on this in the chat room? Um, but uh, the more defensible patents, uh, the more the defensible the patent is, the more important it is, is what I'm trying to say. So if it's kind of a weak patent, um, a business method patent, that kind of thing, you know, you should still should say it because investors always are looking for reasons. You want to give reasons to invest, not to avoid investing, right? So I would put it in as part of your competitive strategy. How's that? Okay. Uh, Hector says, I learned a lot from all your books. Oh, created the base for my island. Great, Hector. Nice. Nice to see you. That's cool. Uh, Deval. Deval's here. Okay. I didn't I miss that. Hey, Deval. Nice to see you. Um, uh, Let's see, Gregorio, can you email my pitch video? Um, no, <laughs> sorry, I get too many. There's a there's a pay I, you can email, but I'm not going to look at it. I get to um, uh, try. There's a page, like I said, startup scottfox.com slash startup. Hold on, maybe I can type it in the chat room. Maybe this will work. Um, I get I do this because I try to help as many people as possible. So unfortunately, that leaves me to the point where I can't engage with everybody individually very well. I think that's it. And if that's not, it's close to that. Um, and But that page I put together, it specifically outlines ways, different funds that I'm involved in. Um, and uh, I can, that can help you navigate some of the resources that I see as useful. Um, and the real way to do this is to go to lots of events and take pitch opportunities. And yeah, we got to do those pitches. We really are going to run out of time. Um, and then also to... Um, if you really want to talk to me, there's a private coaching calls sort of thing on there. And uh, but I'm telling you, I charge 500 bucks an hour, so that's how I manage my my calendar. So if it's if that sounds worth it to you, I'm happy to do that. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Uh, okay, well, I think we got to hop over to our friends in the chat room. But let's. Uh, I think I caught up with the chat. Okay, so one more here. Phil says, um, "How much percent equity shall we give to the tech partner?" to build the MVP costing $150,000. Okay, so that's one more. How about folks in the chat room help out Phil? Um, because that's a complex question. Um, I think the short version of that, Phil, is that it's a negotiation. There is no right number. Um, if it sounds like you're the idea non-technical person and you think obviously that you it's your company and you should own the majority. Well, the tech people have plenty of work from other sources, right? So they probably think they're the most important part of the negotiation, right? So maybe they think they should own the majority. That's called negotiation. So uh, you're going to be stuck somewhere in the middle. Uh, there are standards for this kind of thing. Um, the other way to do it would be to just look at if it's a $150,000 product, um, you know, price that out on some kind of hourly or project basis and give them that percentage, you know, if it's a million dollar company, you give them 15% of that for 150 grand out of a, out of a million, right? And work back words from that, but it's not going to be that easy because there's no there there yet, it sounds like. So um, the real clever, uh, the real clear thing you need to be clear about, sorry, the clear thing you need to be clear about is expectations. How long, how often uh, are they involved? What are the deliverables? I mean, you got to spell all that out. I would offer this actually. Um, I keep this right here because it comes up quite often. Um, this is a very useful book and website, Slicing the Pie. Perfect Equity Splits for Bootstrap Startups. Uh, this is a whole book and methodology. There's a website um, as well that talks about this, how to slice the pie uh, and the things that you need to discuss with your partners. And um, 
this, this does, that's a place to start anyway. There's also a website called comparably.com that used to be free. I don't know if it still is, but you can look at that. And then, of course, um, there's uh, I would also offer um, this one. This is my friends here, um, Cake, CakeEquity.com. Cake is a uh, stock options platform. So I don't think they have a specific answer to that, but they have a knowledge base and they're producing podcasts and stuff about that. And there might be something in there. My friend Jason Atkins, he was actually on the show what, back in January, I think. And again, I'm an investor in that company, so I'm biased, but um, I think they're doing some good work. So that might be helpful. All right. So now we're going to do some pitches. Um, Julia, was that useful? Cool. And uh, Ray says, yes, Ray is a patent attorney, Julia. So listen to him. What I say is don't let the patent tail wag the product dog. Very nice, Ray. Well, let's make t-shirts. <laughs> Very nice. Okay. Ooh. Okay. Um, let's go back here. Um, all right. So, okay. So backstage, we're going to have some pitches here. So Daniel, Andre, Andre, you've got two. Okay. And Atik. Okay. Atik, if you want to pitch, uh, turn on your camera. And I'm presuming those three of you guys are going to uh, pitch. Okay, let's just say hello to everybody and see if we can. Um, there we go. Okay, hi, guys. Uh, nice to meet all of you. So you're all here to pitch? That's the, that's the idea? Yes? Okay. I can see Daniel nodding. Atik, is that why you want to join us as well? I will be a like a verbal pitch i will just say something yeah is that fine okay yeah thank that's, you that's that's the best yep um okay so let's all right well uh, let's just start there atik you want to you want to uh, um let's have atik go first and the idea is this we're gonna just do a couple minutes and everybody that's listening there's dozens of people watching right um we just want to give some feedback um all right this is more about um i'm not gonna so much talk about the business because we don't have time to get into the nuts and bolts of these people's strategies. We're going to presume that the idea is good. More talk about like um, feedback, like what was good, what was missing, that kind of stuff, so they can improve the pitch. Okay. Okay, Atik, let's, let's give you, right. um, I, I usually do this for like two minutes. Okay. So two minutes or less. Yeah. Thank you. Um, it's a log, um, it's a business model I want to create to reduce the suicide and anxiety and stress mm. when i have a contact with the it's a club collaborative business model ecosystem i want to create i have a few um partners they have devices and they are validated and pass the trials as well so i'm trying to create a subscription subscription based business model first facility and my initial investment I need is $400,000. And it will be according to my survey and the target market will be returned within, the initial investment will be returned within three to four months. Okay. And I want to build a global brand. And there's a neuroscientist, some of the neurofeedback doctor researchers, they are all with me from America, from uh, German, and from uh, Sweden. Thank you. And I'm from Sweden, north of Sweden. Oh, excellent. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in. Okay. So thank you for that. It sounds like a, a much needed service. So everybody that's watching, if you have suggestions, Pratik, please put them in the chat room and he can see those. Um, my, uh, so here's here my uh, suggestions would please. be, yeah. Um, so first of all, you have to be enthusiastic, right? You're very quiet. And if you want people to be excited, you have to be excited, right? So uh, have a cup of coffee or a glass of wine, right? And you got to hit it, man. Um, yeah, so, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's one. Uh, although it's, what time is it there? You're, it's pretty, yeah, that might be why, right? Half 10. I mean, yeah. yeah. All right. So it's late. <laughs> all right. So that's not a fair, not a fair I comment. like you, man. Thank you. <laughs> um, so then the other thing is obviously a great need for this kind of thing. That, that, that's great. I would want to hear about your competitors because I know a lot of people have ideas about this. And I myself have seen a number of pitches in this space. So I would need to hear quickly, like, why is this different? And I, you know, you don't need to tell me now, but like next time you do this, we are different because that, right? Um, the idea that it's returned in three or four months is great, of course. So then I would be wondering, like, because you didn't say uh, how much money, 
um, and what you would accomplish. Like what, if it's only three or four months, like what is it you're building? This is something a lot of founders miss is uh, investors. We really like to see um, the milestones. Like um, a lot of people put up a, a slide. Uh, a lot of you have heard me say this before, but they say, you know, give us your money and then we're going to do this. And they put up a slide of a, a like a pie chart and it's 40 percent on people, 40 percent on product development and 20 percent on uh, rent or whatever. And it's like, well, of course, that's uh, yeah, that doesn't tell me anything. I want to know if you're going to take this hundred thousand or million dollars, you're going to build, uh, you know, these three features and sign six more customers, which leads to this much more revenue in this amount of time. Like draw that line for us, and it looks a lot more like a business than a concept, and that that's really what I think people are looking for. So um, I hope that's helpful. Yeah. Thank you like very a, much. Excellent. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Yeah, nice to meet you. Um, it looks like we've got some comments in the chat room for you too. All right. So um, okay. So all right, uh, Andre, you wanna um, come on? And then uh, Daniel, uh, Daniel, and the two of you guys can come last, I guess. So, Andre, yeah, sure. Uh, should I do this with or without screen sharing? Um, I usually do them without. We could try, I guess. Hang on, let me. Um, I'm sharing screen. I, I thought it would be more fun if I just show some pictures of the real product. Yeah, I, I'm just not sure we can do that w without me hanging up the phone. Okay, uh, <laughs> I, I can do without it. <laughs> What's that? Without it. Oh, well, there um, you go. No, no, oh, no. awesome! It did work. Yeah, I like <laughs> this that. This is great. Uh, yeah, at the same time, um, something like elevator pitch would be a nice practice too. But okay, let's do it. Um, so my name is Andrei Mihalchuk, and uh, I'm CTO. So I'm, I'm on the technical side of a company called Four One One Labs, like Four One One, like info. Okay. <laughs> Pre Google time. Um, and uh, the problem we're trying to solve is this. Um, imagine a large enterprise, um, some big company, and I'm talking about some really big companies with thousands of employees, and they have a lot of communication flowing back and forth within this company. And uh, there are some tools which you have heard about, like Slack or Microsoft Teams or just email, right? So, um, and at the same time, there are platforms which offer solutions to communication within these um, enterprises, um, something like Jive, Lumaps, uh, Variant, um, and other names which you may not have heard about. Um, so the problem is none of these platforms offer a good analytics. Uh, none of these platforms give you a full view of what's going on with the communications within one single platform and there is no tool which would aggregate all the different information flows and give you a picture about what's going on with your enterprise community. And uh, by enterprise community, I mean both internal, like your coworkers, talking about things, asking questions, sending files, following someone, and following someone, things like that. Um, and external community as well, because uh, most big corporations, they have also support communities where people talking about the um, products of this um, enterprise. So um, our solution is called Sherpa. Um, it's, it offers this solution to this problem. It aggregates data from multiple platforms. And um, on this screen, you can see five platforms, totally different APIs, totally different sources. And uh, we extract data uh, from all these platforms. Uh, we process this data, combine uh, between different platforms, and then present in the form of dashboards, which give you a um, high-level view of what's going on. Like, for instance, on this screen, okay, you Andre, can see Andre, that. Uh, Andre? Yes. Andre? OK, so you're turning this into a product demo. So that's not what okay. we need, right? You've gone about two minutes Let me already. Let's start sharing. OK. Yeah. Well, you don't have to, you can share, but let's let's hear about the business. This is a pitch, right? Okay, right. Um, thank you for this comment. I'll try to <laughs> adjust yeah, in the future. Yeah. So um, at the moment, it's a very niche product, and for this reason, um, and some another investor already laughed at me when I said that we don't have direct competition. Mm. Uh, there is no product on this very narrow niche that tries to solve this problem, and uh, there is some indirect competition though. Um, so at the moment we're looking um, to raise about $300,000 so that we can um, spread the word about this product, um, get more clients. And uh, our clients are essentially huge companies with thousands of employees. And uh, like I said, we already have uh, some big names in, in our portfolio. Um, 
And uh, the next step would be uh, um, aggregating more platforms. And the following step would be um, offering a product that um, gives not just the uh, social interaction overview within this corporation, but more data, maybe aggregating some financial sources, uh, you know, stuff like that. We'll be listening okay. to the client's okay. feedback. Okay, you're going back into product. I think your time's probably up. Um, so great stuff, but I can tell you're the CTO, right? You're talking about the product. Investors, okay. this is not, I'm not picking on you, but everybody, this is very common for entrepreneurs. They talk about the product because it's their baby. Investors don't care. I want to know about the business. How much money are you making? How much money are you going to make? When? How much do you want from me? And when am I getting it back? Right? So I'm not picking on you, but you, this is this is my helpful feedback for you. You talked for almost five minutes and didn't answer any of that. The only number I heard was 300000 that you're going to raise. So that's that's helpful because then I know, you know, I have some idea because that also implies some sort of valuation, right? Um, but the trick for this kind of thing is to present the problem and solution, which you did, but like in the first 10 seconds and then spend the rest like 90 seconds of how that you solving that solution creates money, <laughs> I guess is the, the simple way to say it. Um, so um, yeah, I, I, that's, that's the feedback, I guess. So you obviously know the product that's not in question. What, what, what investors want to know is the business. So is that useful? Got it. Thank you very much. That's yeah, you're, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Oh, don't take that. Don't take it wrong because you obviously know your stuff. But that's that's the trick. I actually like critique more than saying everything is awesome. Like in your example, <laughs> um, there was example about Japan where everybody is so polite. Right, right. <laughs> that they always say it's great. Right. So right. Yeah. Right. Thank you. It was oh, very helpful. Well. Appreciate okay, it. Okay. Cool. Thank you for taking it in the spirit with which it was intended. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. Well, that's why I do this show because I I get tired of like these events where everybody oh everything's great. It's really like come on, there's some reality here, right? There's real money changing hands. People take this shit personally. You got to get it right. So, all right, we're going to try one more time. And thank you to Andre and Atik. We got, um, so we've got Daniel and we got two, looks like two guys here. Um, let's see, how, how are we going to display you both? I got the pillow in between you, but I can't see either of you. <laughs> there they are. <laughs> Can you guys, uh, you want to introduce yourselves? You have to unmute, I think. Almost. Snap camera looks like you shared your screen. Oh, there, I heard a voice. Nope. You guys hear us? Yeah. There's a voice. Yes. We lost the camera. I'm sorry. Give us one second. Okay. Sorry. I didn't keep you waiting long enough. <laughs> okay. Is that Let's good? See. I think there we good. go. Yes. All right. So who do we have here? Daniel and who's Daniel? Santiago and Santiago. Yes, sir. Daniel and who? Santiago. Santiago. Okay. Where are you guys from? We're, we're located in Arcadia near, near LA. Oh, okay. Great. Yes, sir. All right. So you got to, you want to try to give us a couple minute pitch? Yep. We're sharing my, our screen right now. Okay. One moment, please. Is this right it? There. Yep. Is that one? Mm -hmm. No, I don't think so. Oh, there you go. No, I'm oh. sorry. No, that's right. I got to share it though for you too. All right. One more time. Or are you sitting? Window, window, and turn screen. I don't know. Okay. I think it's that one. There you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you guys see it? Yeah, I think there you go. Nice. You go. So technically, um, we're create. It's kind of crazy, but we're creating a new sport, right? But what, what do, what do we mean with this? Uh, there's a huge need in the soccer world, right? Only two percent of soccer, uh, college soccer players get to the professional level. So one of the ways that we kind of figure out how to fix it is creating a new sport, right? So we created um, this whole new revolutionary soccer-based sport. And I know if I know it's kind of it's not usual, but we want to help all these young, uh, you know, professional uh, soccer players to get to the top, you know, because most of them are not going to be like professional soccer players before because these statistics show us that only 0.1% in Spain, they're going to get to the professional level. In here in the U.S., it's only 1.7%. What's going to happen with the 
98% of those young guys that have dream with, you know, the, this, uh, this professional um, soccer thing. So there you go. We're going to try to fix that. We already have all the, the how to, how can we build it? How can we make it work? Well, we just, we're not, we don't have that experience. So we would like to know how, how can, how can we do something like that? How can we like how can commercialize we monetize, it, yeah. monetize it? Mm -hmm. how, where can we get help? Something like that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this is more of a question than a pitch or are you still going? Yeah. I, and I, I heard you said you would like to know about the, our, our competition, right? Yeah, of course sure. there's competition. I don't know if you guys have heard of spike ball, yeah. tech ball. Those are technically new sports that are growing right now. And those are like, Technically, our competitors, they're, they they created a new sport and they also like making it happen. They're helping a lot of people, a lot of athletes, and we would like to do that too. Um, yeah. 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 So, for example, Tech Bowl, uh, they, the problem with Tech Bowl is that they have a big, big table where, you know, it's like $3,000 for the table. So it's like, you know, it's a big issue where it comes to like the uh, flexibility flexibility of you know the sport like you know you can't just go to Walmart and buy a tech ball table you know it's very expensive very hard to get it so we kind of saw this and we we're like okay we can make a sport kind of like you know we we know the need of you know soccer players wanting to become professionals so instead we created a very simple you know uh, product where people could buy off you know maybe 200 300 dollars we still haven't decided on that yet we haven't uh, done the math on that yet properly um, but we know uh, that it's going to be a lot cheaper, a lot more flexible to carry around, you know, something that people could, you know, just set up on the ground, set up on the grass, set up anywhere and, you know, uh, properly play. Also, the game is also completely individual. Um, so, you know, as soccer is, you know, it's 11 people on the team. This is going to be just yourself and your skills. You know, anyone can play any age. Um, we're also, you know, in the dreams of setting up the uh, events uh, through an app. So it's going to be uh, through the app. You can find multiple tournaments where people could uh, keep their scores, keep their um, statistics okay. through the app. Okay. Got great stuff, but um, that's about as much time as we have. So is yeah. there something specific you wanted to ask or is there a pitch? Like, like do you, is there a number you want to, like you're looking for this amount of money or how would you wrap this up? If we jump to the last slide, for example. Okay, so uh, basically what we want to ask is what's the proper way to monetize this? And if it, it's like a real, uh, if there's a real way to monetize it, yeah. Yeah, it'll make it work. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, um, well, congratulations. It sounds very creative and exciting. I mean, uh, that's 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 cool. I mean, that's entrepreneurship, right? And helping people. Sorry, I put you back where we can see you. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so here's the, here's the challenge. And I, so I'm going to tell you the truth, right? Yeah. So sounds fabulous. There is a huge market demand for this. I agree. That makes some sense. Um, the trick is uh, that it, how do you make money, right? Again, we got to come back. You, like the previous, uh, like Andre, you talked a lot about the dream. Well, his was an actual product, but yours is even less than a product. It's more of an idea. And investors are not really into ideas. They're into businesses, right? So what is the business, right? So um, I think it, the the pitch would need to be a lot more specific. Like I'm still not even clear. Is it a, and you can't, we don't have time for you to answer me, but next time if you do this and you can come back and do this again, that's cool. Um, is it a product? Like, is there, are you selling balls like spike ball? Is it a set of something or this table you were talking about? Or is it a service? Like it's a platform you're helping connect people, maybe a marketplace or it's both. I don't know. Um, you know, like you you need to be more specific because I'm still, you, you talk for almost five minutes and I'm still not sure what you are doing specifically and how it would make any money. And that's what this is about is the business, not the concept, right? We're just going to assume that the concept is good and it did sound good, honestly. So then the trick is, okay, so let's assume that we did that. It's whatever the thing is, it makes money like this, that you got to have that. Then the question is, well, you already identified four other sports are there more, right? Because most people and everybody listening to this, everybody thinks they have no competition. And Andre mentioned this as well. Like we have no direct competition. Well, you may think that, and it may even be true, but investors aren't so worried about your little niche, whether you have competition. They're worried about like, if I give you $100,000, could I make more money by giving to someone else? I don't care whether it's the same niche or not. 
uh, you know, I'm going to go and buy Pokemon cards and sell them on eBay and I can make more money, right? It's a completely different alternative, right? So the fact that you don't have any direct competition isn't as important as what are my alternatives as an investor? So you need to think a little more about that and add the specifics. And, and, and here's the real challenge. I'm not trying to dissuade you. I'm trying to help you by giving you the what I see as the facts. And this is my opinions, right? I'm just some guy you met on the internet. <laughs> what you're talking about is such a big idea that it's hard to believe, right? No offense to you, right? But I mean, man, if you could do that, awesome. But how, you know, to launch a new sport, that's that's like curing cancer. Well, maybe not that good, but you know, it's big, right? It's super big, right? So that would take millions of dollars and like hundreds of people all over the world, probably. So you need to give the investor some idea how you get from you two guys to that, right? Like what, 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 how is that? What is it about you that's unique? You know, are, are you uniquely qualified in this way? Is your, is, are you related to Lionel Messi or I mean, well, what's, what's your angle, right? <laughs> like you've got something unique about you that makes you the people to do this. And then I think really the challenge is for finding investors is what we've been talking about this whole show actually is finding people who really care, right. That see this problem, probably former soccer players or, or, um, you know, or agents or lawyers or, you know, or big super fans or something like what's the angle to raise money. Well, it's probably people who, who believe in the, the, the idea already, right? You're not going to go to just some random tech. You're not going to go to Google. Like Google doesn't particularly care, right? You're going to go to people in that niche. So I think your job, guys, is to, to, to make it more like real and like what is it and how does it make money? And then go and make friends, right? And find some ways to demonstrate this, right? Like sign up. This is the part where um, you got to do the, the hustle, right? Like go find, you know, 50 people and break them into uh, five teams of 10 each and show how it works, right? And it doesn't have to be worldwide. I mean, it, hopefully it'll get worldwide, but like find the easiest place where you can prove your point. Because right now talk is, talk is cheap, right? Um, what can you do to really, you know, come back sometime and show me slides that say, look, you know, we spent three weeks on this and we signed up, whatever, you know, 14 people and, and two restaurants as sponsors. And now we're building this. And by the end of July, we're going to have built this, you know, like that, that it's got to be real, right? Because investors, it, it just ideas is not enough anymore. And especially given how big your vision is, it just, it's hard to believe, right? No offense, but it's like, wow, we're going to build a rocket and go to the moon. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> right. So is that helpful? I hope, I hope that's useful. That's yeah. super helpful. Yeah. Thank okay. you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, great. Mm -hmm. well, nice to meet you guys. And uh, yeah. And there's some comments for you. It looks like in the chat room as well. I hope we'll see you again. Um, thanks for, thanks for joining us. And I think we're about done today. Let me just check the, uh, yeah, we're 140. Wow. Okay. Uh, yeah, Mimi has some comments for you about Quidditch <laughs> from Harry Potter. And uh, Kieran's in there helping people. Uh, pickleball, good point. I'm a pickleball person, Urban Astro Canada. Yes, pickleball has taken over the world. Uh, don't Doesn't sound like that's their interest, but um, that's a place where you guys could probably learn some, um, some growth techniques, right? Because pickleball is exploding. Yeah, great point. Um, hello, Zach. Nice to see you. Thank you for the, the enthusiasm. Um, okay. So I think we got through all the chat as well. I'm going to go have my real lunch now. And I hope that you have a good evening or um, daytime or wherever you are. Thank you all for joining me from all over the world. Really appreciate if you like and subscribe. If you have follow-up questions, please post them on LinkedIn. We're learning that, uh, or YouTube, that posting stuff there helps us get more views. And that's what this is all about. Trying to help more founders like you move farther, faster, and make more money and make the world a better place. So I'm Scott Fox. And if you haven't already, if you didn't get the hint, there is the mailing list. And there's a whole bunch of different services on that site that you guys should sign up for. I hope it's useful for you. I'll be back here again next month. I do this once a month on the fourth Tuesday. And if you join those other email lists, we'll also have uh, our masterminds workshops. And like I said, there's a bunch of other founder-friendly uh, founder services at startupcouncil.org. Thanks for joining me. And I hope to see you all again next time. Tell your friends and uh, get out there. Let's, let's, let's make it happen. It's up to us, man. <laughs> Cheers.